10,000 miles from the Bismarck Sea. Throughout the United States, shipyards are building a new amphibious navy, and strange new ships called LSTs, landing ship tanks. These will change the pattern of war. The Second World War has evolved into the first great amphibious conflict in history, and landing craft take priority over destroyers, carriers, and everything else. Down the rivers of the United States, into the oceans of the world, plod the LSTs. Landing ship tanks, but she will be used for everything else as well. And loading her for combat becomes a job for experts. The 2,100 tons of materiel she carries must be stowed aboard in precise sequence and proper order, so that what is needed worst can be put ashore quickest when she joins battle on some remote beachhead. Australia. Throughout the Southwest Pacific, the Allies shift from dogged defense to spirited assault. Beginning in the summer of 1943, the men, the ships, the materiel flow in a massive surge west and north toward Mindanao in the distant Philippines. General MacArthur's strategy has long called for an advance along the New Guinea-Mindanao axis. This advance will be borne largely by small amphibious craft, a navy without glamour. These men know only hard work, hard living, hard fighting, and hard-won victories. Now the LSTs, the floating garages, come into their own. Loading techniques blueprinted in advance become actuality. Pile it in, stuff them full, and every item finds its designated place. Supreme Commander, Southwest Pacific Area, accompanies the assault troops with Rear Admiral Barbie, commander of the 7th Amphibious Force. I shall return, MacArthur has said, referring to the Philippines. But fulfillment has seemed remote. Now the return begins. From Sydney, from Brisbane, into the Coral Sea, into the Bismarck Sea, along the northern New Guinea coast, move the Allied armies and navies. combined operations carried out by the forces of several nations working in closely welded units. Ships of the Royal Australian Navy do yeoman service with the convoys, fight with all they have in battle. These are footholds along the New Guinea coast needed for Allied progress westward. The approach is covered, stealthy, cloaked in darkness. And night in the convoy is tense, silent, strained. Dawn will bring the test of combat, the ordeal of fire.
everywhere the Japanese resist with fortitude, fury, determination. Cut off from their bases, with retreat impossible, they fight the losing battle for New Guinea. More rugged, more useful than even their designers dreamed. The LSTs nose into the shore and disgorge their torrent of supplies. The wealth and ingenuity that has made America great in peace combine to make her victorious in war. promises to his emperor, dictator Tojo has promised to stop the enemy's westward movement. The Imperial Japanese command, having lost the initiative, falls back on the tenacity of the foot soldier. All the strength that can be spared from other theaters is mustered to hold western New Guinea for the empire. <laughs> 